Hello and welcome to Treasure in Every Verse. I'm your host, author and Bible teacher, Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. Right now, you're probably asking yourself, what is Treasure in Every Verse all about? Here on Treasure, we, that's me and my trusted friend, Mr. Dash here, will be taking on the heavy topics. No surface dwellers here, my friend. We're going from milk to meat. That's right, steak eaters, beloved. And for my vegetarian brothers and sisters out there, I didn't forget about you from salads to veggie burgers. No biblical book, chapter, verse, or topic is too difficult. Let me tell you about some of the topics we will be covering here on Treasure. First, God's view of salvation. How does he know who is saved? And what does it truly mean to be born again? This is a deep dive into the new birth, detailing what actually happens to a believer at the moment of spiritual conception. You're going to want to hear this, my friend. Second, does the Bible teach predestination to heaven and to hell? Third, does God love the sinner yet hate the sin? Or how does God treat believers after they're saved? Can a true believer lose their salvation? We're going to deal with even the terrible three that strike fear in the hearts of most believers. I'm talking about number five, the terror of Hebrews 6. Number six, the trepidation of Hebrews 10. Number seven, the torment of 2 Peter 2. Number eight, what is the sin unto death? Number nine, why did God allow sin and evil? Big question there. Number 10, is there really a hell? This show is for you. So tee up your questions and Mr. Dash and I will answer your questions on the show. If your question is selected to be answered on the show, we will send you one of my books, your choice, for free. Just provide us your contact information and we will get the book out to you. Submit your questions through the contact page on my website, That's KevinJMadison.com. You can see it at the bottom of the screen or on my Preach the Word Network on-demand page or you can email me at info at KevinJMadison.com. Here on Treasure in Every Verse, we do not stray from the Word of God. For it alone is the power of God that brings salvation to all who would repent and believe the gospel. There is no other way, beloved, to spiritual growth. You cannot grow spiritually from listening to music, from reading self-help books, investing your time in seeking this world's prosperity, attending church, praying, and definitely not watching most of the garbage on TV, the internet, or social media. Faith only comes by hearing and listening to God's word. Believers are often challenged to study the word of God. However, Most don't study. Why? Because they don't understand what they're reading. Why don't they understand? True believers lack understanding because they lack the proper biblical foundation. That's the area the show will address. Before we venture into the meat of the word, we will lay the proper foundation that will equip you to be a miner of God's word. That's right instead of a surface dweller, let me strongly encourage you to download the shows that you may be able to revisit and take your time to study them until it becomes a part of your thinking process. So let me list the first four shows which I will use to get you the foundation for the Bible study. That's right, a Bible study. Show number one, laying the foundations Principles to enhance our biblical understanding. Show number two, laying the foundations. Story of the ages. God's plan to rid his creation of even the possibility of sin. This is from my book, book number four of the series from Sinner to Saint Metamorphosis, which doesn't come out on the market until December of this year. So you're getting a treat here. Show number three, laying the foundations. Conflict of the ages. Satan's attempt to stop God's plan from coming to pass. Yes, Satan has a plan. Show number four, laying the foundations. Seven things God was doing before he created anything, beloved. Yes, God wasn't idly sitting around on his throne saying, woe is me, let me create something to join me. 
No, God was busy doing his plan, setting it up, and he revealed it all right here in the word of God. So this is a Bible study, my friend. Let's pretend that you and I are having a one-on-one conversation. That's what I want. This is not church. This is not me preaching. I don't preach. I am not a Bible preacher, okay? I teach the word of God. So let's talk about some of the things that we need to do to lay the foundation, principles to enhance our biblical understanding. This is key, beloved. This will build the foundation, the proper foundation, so that you can can enact these things so that you can understand clearly what's being taught in the scripture. So the first thing we have here is God wrote the Bible from two perspectives, okay? There's God's vantage point. Then there's man's vantage point. Say, Kevin, what in the world do you mean by that? Well, Isaiah 57 and 15, let me read it to you. For thus says the high and lofty one, get this, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high place, in a holy place, with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Now, God says, I dwell in eternity. So what does that mean? That means that there's two realms. There's the spiritual realm where God resides. And then, second, there's the physical realm where we reside. The spiritual realm consists of God. It consists of the angels, okay? Things that can't be seen, right? Then the physical world is everything that you and I can see, touch, feel. That's the physical realm. See, where's that in the Bible? Well, turn with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll do the physical first, all right? And then we'll get right to the, the spiritual because the Bible in these three verses, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, it says, therefore, we do not lose hope. Even though our outward man is perishing, that's your body, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Hey, that's your soul. That's not the part of you that's born again. Keep that in mind. For our light affli- affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen. Okay, why not, God? But at the things that are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. That's what the Bible says about everything that's in the physical realm. It's only temporary. Well, what's going to happen to it? Well, 2 Peter tells us it's going to burn up. God says he's going to destroy it all and fire this time. Remember the first time he did it with a flood? This time, God says, I am going to wipe it out. Everything that can be observed by man in the physical realm is going to disappear. And guess what? Even part of the spiritual realm where God don't exist is going to disappear. Yes, that's also in that same passage in 2 Peter. So, Then he says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's the spirit realm, okay? So when God looks down and he sees time, what do God see? God see all time on a level plane, okay? You and I count the minutes and the days and the weeks and the years. That's not how God looks at things. He sees it on a flat plane. He sees the beginning to the ending. Everything with God happens today, here, now. Okay, you're living today. Yet God see when he first started doing creation. God sees the parting of the Red Sea. God sees the cross. God sees when you got saved. God sees the Antichrist coming. God sees when he's going to replace the, the heaven and the current earth with a new heaven and a new earth. He sees all of that right here, right now. In the spirit realm, there is no such thing as time. That's the way God view these things. From his perspective, when you go through the Bible and when God is talking, that's why sometimes it don't make sense to us because we don't recognize and apply the proper dimension. 
He's in the spirit realm looking at it without time. We are applying this viewpoint, man's viewpoint, where we are constrained to time. That's not how, how the Bible's written. So we need to understand and make sure that we are applying the word of God the way it's supposed to be. So even the Lord Jesus restricted himself when he entered this realm, the physical realm, inside of the body of a man. Jesus could only be in one place at one time. However, after the resurrection, he filled all eternity again. I'm not following you. Okay, let me explain it. Jesus is God. The Spirit of Christ was in heaven from the beginning. Okay? He's God, the Spirit. God, the Spirit, don't have a body. Okay? But the man, Jesus Christ, has a body. He has a beginning. But God himself don't have a beginning. He exists in eternity. Okay? So what happened? Jesus, that Spirit, the Bible says, inserted himself into the body of a man, restricting himself from being everywhere at one time. Not the spirit, but the body. Then after that body was crucified and raised from the dead, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us it went from being a physical body to a spiritual body. Now Jesus was unleashed. Unleashed how? Jesus was able to be everywhere at one time, all the time. That's the glory of looking at it from God's perspective. He re-entered into the spirit realm with a physical body that didn't have blood, that didn't have flesh. It was a different flesh. That's what the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 44. There is a physical body and the Bible says there is a spiritual body, okay? That's the God perspective. That's the God vantage point. So let's move on, all right? Point number two, we show that we should not go into a Bible study with preconceived beliefs. So, what are my preconceived beliefs? Well, the beliefs you've been taught your whole life. You know, ask yourself, how old are you today, Okay? Hey, I'm, I'm 54. But I didn't come to Christ until I was 21. So what did I learn from the time I was birthed to 21? Well, I learned the world's ways. You know, I went to school. I got the education. You know, even though I grew up in a pastor's home, yet I still did the things that the world did. And my education, everything that I grew up with, all filled my mind, my soul, with the world's ways. Guess what? When I got saved and when you got saved, beloved, God didn't change my mind. He recreated a spirit in me. Okay, what's the difference? The difference is we were made in the image of God. What is that? God himself is a spirit. So he first created you a spirit. Then the Bible says you were created in God's likeness. Well, what is that? Well, the Bible says that Christ was the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. So that means God actually possessed the body of Christ from God's perspective, again, from God's perspective, before he created all things. So, where did that leave us? We have the body that Christ had before God created anything, okay? We had a spirit like God. We had a body, a soul like Christ. And then ultimately in the fullness of time, he put on a fleshly body. Well, that's the three parts that we have, a spirit, a soul, and a body. That's us. So we'll come back and we'll pick this up right after this break. Hello everyone, Kevin Madison here with book two of my four book series from Center to Saint Metamorphosis, The Chastisement of the Lord. Just to give you some more detail on the book, let's read some of the things that's on the back cover. Have you ever wondered how the Lord reacts to one of his children who deliberately sin against him? Let's make this personal. Have you sinned against your heavenly father and wondered if he is angry with you and what will happen next? Let's go through some of the contents of the book 
Here in, in part one, we go through the ancient Jewish wedding, the eternal home. In part two, we go through the sheep and goats from corruption to glory. In part three, this is where we deal with the terror of Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, and 2 Peter chapter 2. This, my friend, is a book you don't want to be without. You can order the book on Amazon or on from my website, kevinjmadison.com. Hello everyone, Kevin Madison here. I want to take a minute and talk to you about my book, Predestined to Hell. Why would a God of love consign people to hell forever? Here are a few questions that's on the back of the book. Have you ever wondered why the Bible says some people will go to heaven and some to hell? Have you ever asked yourself, how can a God of love send anyone to hell forever? Let's make this personal. Have you ever wondered if you're going to heaven or going to hell? So here's some of the topics that's in the book. Our identity, the two types of people. Who are the enemies of God? Is hell real? Who is Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ God the Savior? Condemned, why God? So this book was written to promote evangelism. So purchase your book today. You can buy it on Amazon or on my website, kevinjmadison.com. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. We stopped for the break on number two about preconceived beliefs. And I was explaining to you how that works. You know, the Bible teaches believers that after you're born again, that spirit, the new creation, he's a full-grown person. That There's no need for him to learn anything. The Bible says he was created in righteousness and true holiness after God. So that's what's in Christ. That's your position, okay? Now, we have to deal with what the Bible calls the, the providential salvation. You know, what is that? Well, that's the renewing of your mind. You see, that soul part isn't born again. You know, when, when you get born again and you come into Christ, your mind, the way you think, don't automatically change. It don't just refresh itself. You have to feed it the Word of God. And that's what the Spirit of God takes and have you thinking God's thoughts after Him. So let me give you a few verses. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 18. Lord, open my eyes that I may behold Jesus. So this allowed the Spirit of God to correct you whenever His Word conflicts with your understanding and with your current beliefs. Okay? So when we go into Bible studies, what we do is we say, Lord, take me and mold me into the image of your son. How? Jesus, the Bible says, learned obedience. When he was 12, the Bible says he grew in wisdom and stature. So he grew in his mind and he grew in his physical appearance. Notice, he didn't grow in spirit. That's not what he did. God was in him. There's no growth to God. God doesn't sleep. God doesn't eat. Your spirit never sleeps. Okay? So we are just like that. But we have to do exactly like our Lord did. He grew in his soul, in wisdom, and he grew in stature. All right. So how do we approach that? He first says in, in Psalm 119, 18, Lord, open my eyes so I may behold Jesus. That's what you want. Lord, I desire to have the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. That's Philippians 3, 11. Then we go, that I may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. That's John 17 and 3. Next we go, that your words may be written on my heart to keep me from sinning against you. 
That's Psalm 119.11. Next, that my mind may be renewed, that I may think your thoughts after you. That's Romans 12.1. And finally, to the praise of your glory, that all who see me have this testimony concerning me, I perceive that he or she have been with Jesus. Have you ever had anybody say that to you? If not, then you really need to pay attention to the lifestyle that you're leading in front of people because they should be seeing Christ in you every single day. I'm not talking about salvation. We're talking about lifestyle. We're talking about something that happens after you get saved. Listen, if all you do is change behavior, that isn't a new birth, okay? Guess what? Believers, we need to understand that there are unbelievers who act and behave better than some believers. So what are you saying? They're saved just because they act a certain way? No, that's not biblical salvation. Biblical salvation is God doing a change, a metamorphosis to everyone that simply placed their trust in the one who reconciled all things back to God, okay? The problem that men have is twofold. In Romans 3, he tells us exactly what that is. Everybody have sinned, right? Not sins, sin, S-I-N, all right? That's a difference. Sin is a body. Sin is something that happened. It's your spirit. It's in you, okay? That's the part that is alive to God. That's the only part of you that God communicates with. He don't communicate with your soul, and he definitely don't communicate with your body because God don't have a body, okay? He communicates with your spirit. That's the part that's born again. Then, okay, when we do the soulish part, God, that, that spirit who's new and holy, feeds off what you're putting into your mind. So if you're putting the junk of the world in your mind, guess what? You're going to act that out in your body. The last thing that happens is you reveal what you're feeding yourself in your body. Now, here, here we're coming up on, uh, we just finished the new year, right? We moved from 2021 into 2022. Folks are doing all these New Year's re resolutions. What are they doing? They're exercising. They're pledged to eat better. Why? Appearance. Where did that start? It doesn't start in your body. It starts from you making up your mind that you're going to eat right and exercise. You see, so it's your mind that's really controlling your body. You think about your actions, then you do them. So what's controlling you? What's in your mind? What are you feeding yourself, beloved? That's the issue here. The issue isn't your actions. The issue is what you're feeding yourself that's causing you to do the things that you're doing. Renew your mind. Get into the Word of God. When you watch this show, pick up your Bible. Remember, Bible study. You and I, one-on-one. -on -one, we both have our Bibles open. We're going through the Scriptures. Okay? That's what we are doing. So as we learn and go through these foundations, we are going to learn the deep things of God but first, we're going to build these proper foundations. So let's move on. The next thing we have here is mapping God's will. His will is his plan. So what does that mean? That means that God has certain things, how he interacts with nations in the Bible, with people in the Bible, with areas in the Bible, okay? And how he addressed those people, those nations, those areas, as they fit into God's reconciliation plan. That's what the entire Bible is about. We need to understand that. It's not some historical book. God has basically outlined salvation from the beginning where he was by himself through the end of time. So the ages go 
from in the beginning, God, that's an age. Most people read that and they just walk right over that. That's a surface reader. If you go and you just look up that phrase, in the beginning, Jesus actually used that phrase more than anybody. Then you have a second phrase of that that goes before the foundation of the world. Well, when was that? In the beginning. So if you go look up those two phrases, you can actually see for yourself what God was doing before he created one single solitary thing. That's Bible study, friend. That's mining the word of God instead of surface dwelling. That's what I mean. So how does this work? God's will. First, we have the sovereign will of God. That's his decrees. Things like, let there be light. And when he says, let there be, guess what? It has no choice but to be. And you'll find that in Isaiah 55, 11, not the let there be commands, but where God says that everything that he says will come to pass and it has no possibility that it won't come to pass. That's a decree that cannot be altered. Okay, God says, I set the foundation of the earth. I put the sun in the sky in its position and who can change it? That's God being God. That's God saying, this is my decree. These are the things that I have established and there isn't anyone alive that can change what I've done because there is no other God besides me. Second, we have the perceptive will of God. This is God's moral commands which are established by God's decrees, which can be resisted through behavior, yet have real consequences like don't steal. Steal, you go to jail. Cut that out. Okay, do not commit sexual immorality. Sin is against the Bible, the, the, the body. The Bible teaches that, Romans 2, 12 through 16. And finally, we have the permissive will of God. What God allows and permits, although he does not create or sanction it, so what in the world is that? That's evil. That's crime. That's sickness. That's divorce. That's all these things that even we, as wicked, wretched sinners, also have heard. We don't like crime. We don't like sickness, right? You don't like any of that stuff. You don't like being poor. You don't like being without. You don't like seeing people struggling. We don't like seeing people, you know, Struggling for food, starving. Nobody likes that. Well, guess what? God allows those things and he permits them. Although he did not create or sanction it. Those things came about because of sin. So thank you, beloved. We're going to have to end right here. Our time is out. And God bless you. And we'll see you next week. 